Yes, welcome back, Padres. Here we are all in the first episode for 2024, and, well, we can't wait. Louis's been hassling us for three weeks to get this show up and, uh, up and going, and, uh, well, good uh, afternoon to you, Lewis, from Queensland, I believe. Yeah, sunny Queensland on a little bit of annual leave uh, from uh, Sky Duties, but content never stops, so here I am. Guys, welcome back. Week Good number stuff. one, great to see your smiling faces yet again for another year. And uh, Group 1 Racing is back. It's a good Group 1 to start as well, the CF4 Stakes. Always a little intrigue between horses who are maybe up and firing and uh, the first up horses who are probably of better quality, but it creates an interesting matchup, you know, race fitness trying to nab one early on in the season versus the top horses coming back who are maybe just not at their peak yet. So a lot to unfold. We'll soon know, guys. Love that, love that. And uh, Dean Watling, the man that's all over the two-year-olds at the trials. Good afternoon. Afternoon, fellas. A pleasure to be back for 2024. I think this is probably the first week we can actually remember what week it is from here on. I think listeners are on their own. Uh, Maybe week two we'll get around to. But always a pleasure to chat to you too. Hopefully, we can start the season off well. I think it's one of the better two-year-old years we've seen in a while. I think we spoke about this throughout the week, fellas, and I think we do need it. We've got um, top-line horses, uh, away for age ranks, dropping like absolute flies. So I think we need a couple of nice two-year-olds to progress to a three-year-old to fill these ranks. Yeah, we certainly will, because uh, there can only be one winner of the Golden Slipper, isn't that right? So they might send mm-hmm. one out to uh, to do its best work, but a few of these might uh, continue on their racing journey, which is good to see. And look, a nice little segue as, as we uh, kick off the show. Why don't we do a little uh, top five uh, two-year-olds as you see them, and then then we'll just have a bit of a round table uh, on those before we chime into. Uh, we'll do that before we chime into maybe having a look at a potential blue diamond and golden sleeper market. Dino, why don't you kick us off with your top five seed uh, for the two-year-olds of two thousand twenty-four? Yeah, like we just spoke of, it was a little bit of a, a lacklustre start to the two-year-old ranks, but then they've started to build their way uh, sort of throughout the last couple of weeks. I think um, top place for me is definitely Storm Boy. A phenomenal effort winning um, the Magic Millions up there on the Gold Coast, and he just screams to me he's going to get better with another preparation under his belt. I think the query is, can they get him fresh enough to win over 1,200 metres in a slipper? That stable can do no wrong. Uh, he's number one. Number two, uh, Shangla Express, Gano's favourite horse. We'll leave him to talk, or you to talk about him. Number three, we saw this Colt win on debut the other week. Switzerland brings a very similar profile to Shinzo, took out the slipper. Lady of Camelot broke the clock and broke Gano and I's hearts and form analyst careers on the weekend. In for five, this is where I've tossed up for a while. I put in straight charge, who's probably out of sight, out of mind. I think you can throw in espionage, high octane, stay focused, uh, plenty of them in for fifth. But Louis, they were my top five thus far out um, in the two yard ranks. Yep, I um, I can't be much different. Storm Boy uh, is at the top for me as well. It's uh, what I like to do in in racing ga- in this game. Sometimes is try and listen to people who are much smarter than I am because I think that uh, is often a uh, you know use your information, but but lean on those who actually know what the hell they're talking about. And if everyone on Twitter is coming out the smarts as they call them, the ratings guys, the times guys, etc., and everyone saying that Storm Boy is perhaps the best. Magic Millions two-year-old winner we've ever seen, well, I'm going to say that that's probably a pretty smart two-year-old. So it, it, it clearly goes on top, I think. Obviously, it's a funny game and, and more so in two-year-olds that that doesn't mean that the slip is a, a be-all and end-all conclusion here. Um, and what that does create is is good prices for some other horses that you might like if you do want to spec them because it's it's a pretty lopsided market at the moment. Other ones I wanted to include, Bold Bastille, a uh, little bit of a setback, which is disappointing, but has always been aimed at the Blue Diamond. Uh, which is a strong push, and, and the debut win at the Valley was good. I love you mentioned Espionage, Dino. It, for me, is the one that's been out of sight, mm-hmm. out of mind. The uh, race that it won on debut was the Breeders' Plate, I think, from memory, yep. and that has subsequently proved a really strong form line with a lot of uh, two-year-olds coming out of that uh, and winning, such as Lady of Camelot. So it's in for me. And Coleman, another one too I wanted to throw in off that uh, good win on the weekend. Love it, lads. Yeah, Storm Boy, uh, there or thereabouts. Uh, the only query I have on all those data points is a, a lot of them are relative um, to previous tracks, previous track records, things like that. This is a brand new track. Just have a minor query there, minor query, but clearly it was phenomenal and comparatively to what we saw on the day. So big tick. Switzerland was phenomenal, super, has an abundance of upside right there. Lady Camelot, we saw something pretty impressive there, really, really Really impressive. I think that horse will go down to the Blue Diamond and prove hard to beat. 
Shangri-La Express. Well, a bit disappointed in this trial, Dino. Probably one that might have fallen off a little bit to uh, to my eye. Uh, I wanted it clearly on top, but the trial is a bit disappointing. And uh, I'm really keen to see what high octane can produce. Right, if I had to give you uh, 10 bucks and you could only have one bet on the Blue Diamond and one bet on the Golden Slipper, Dino, um, give us your $10 play on the uh, Blue Diamond and the Slipper. Yeah, well, this far out, a lot of the prices are gone. If I had to take a price right now, um, I would be taking the price to stay focused. I think that horse, another one that's out of sight, out of mind, I think it's out to around that $10 mark. If I have $10 on it and in the slipper, gee, that's a hard ask. Um, I would lean the way of maybe Espinage at the moment at $15. This is all price. I think uh, Storm Boy hard to beat, High Octane hard to beat in the diamond, but the prices are gone, Louis. I was going to say you just wasted twenty bucks, but you did secure fifty one dollars for uh, for everyone that listens to SC and Giddy up on high octane. So full credit to you. That's some phenomenal stuff, <laughs> Louis. What do you got for your your twenty bucks? Yeah, I'd go I'd go ten dollars on Bold Bass Steel in the Diamond, um, hoping that it can overcome uh, the setback that it's had, and I guess we'll we'll know this weekend whether that's going to be a good bet or not. And uh, Golden Slipper, uh, uh, I can. I'll put my ten on Storm Boy, and I'll shout you boys a beer if it lobs at the pub, and probably not get change left over with the price. <laughs> <Yeah. of the laughs> well, Dino and I get a beer, you won't get one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's right. say. absolute carve up. It's forty five dollars for three beers. Where you hang around? Hey, yeah, um, just one bottle of soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fair dinkum, never ends. Hey, uh, lads, let's just, let's go straight to Caulfield. Let's have a little chat about uh, the CF4 stakes this weekend. But before we do that, uh, when you're out there, uh, viewers, listeners, punters, uh, whatever you'd like to go by, let us know your two-year-old, um, mm, your selection for two-year-olds, top five. Give us your top five um, in order. That will be fantastic. And also let us know who you think is going to win the Blue Diamond and the Golden Slipper in the comments below. Uh, make sure you are subscribing as well because then you know when this drops, you won't have to catch it on a Friday when it's out on a Monday and you'll be able to get the early mm. prices. CFO Stakes 2024 over the 1,400 metres, Group 1, Wait for Age. Mr. Brightside, Craig Williams, book, Minimic, Blake Shin, Ayrton with Jamie Carr, Buffalo River. Celine gets aboard there as an apprentice. That's pretty good for a Group 1, uh, group, group one appearance. Pericles, Zara, a tissue, Mickey D, Pride of Jenny, Declan Bates, and V8, Damien Lane. And uh, no prices up at the moment, but Mr. Brightside was about $1.80, $1.90 with Tab Louie. What are your thoughts on uh, on this edition? Pretty good edition. And as I mentioned kind of off the top, uh, it, 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 it is a good contest between uh, some horses who have maybe already had a start this preparation and those who are coming here first up, such as Mr. Brightside, uh, you know, definitely one of Australia's, if not Australia's best horse from last preparation and how he stacks up globally. Well, you know, you'd have to fit in somewhere to the, perhaps the top 10. Uh, however, I wanted to go off previous form, the group two Australia stakes. They've won three of the past seven editions. Uh, of the CF4, I'm not I'm not crazy on V8 as a horse. I think there's still a lot left there. Um, but the the win in the Australia Stakes was I thought only fair ish. But what I did like is uh, the tenacity because it was it was swamped late, right, and just kind of kept finding with that big loping action that it's got. Um, so I think they they haven't really gotten anywhere near to the bottom yet of V8. And I think uh, with fitness second up, coming off that historic form line that leads into this CF4, uh, I think is my play. Albeit, as you could probably hear by my reasoning, I think, I think, I think I'm not very confident um, <laughs> in the race. But yeah, that that's probably the way I'd lean, Dino. Yeah, it's a fascinating race. Uh, like you mentioned, similar to the Wing Stakes, where you got horses with race fitness compared to horses first up, who are probably better horses. Mr. Brightside's interesting. That latest jump out or trial was a little bit underwhelming. I know there was a little pony out in front setting a hot tempo and he's probably off the bit and wasn't comfortable. His work through the line was good, but comparatively to his jump outs and trials in the spring carnival, I'd suggest it's different. He's coming off a big campaign. Is he going to be a little bit flat? Similar story for Pride of Jenny. She reminds me a lot of Forbidden Love when she had that exceptional autumn and then she was flat as a tack going into the spring. So... Probably couldn't chime into them at the price. I want to be against V8, Louis. I thought, like you said, that win first up, albeit good. He beat Curran and Crosshaven. Like, is that group form? Is that group one winning form? Not sure. I would probably be more heavily potting him here if I knew the exact setup, speed map, etc., etc. 
But this far out, I just think he's going to be over bet. Um, I think the bet in the race potentially, Gano is Pericles a place for a bit of value. Can't chime in a bright side. I think he wins the race, but that price couldn't chime in. Pericles tried up really well. Zara on speed from that 1,400-metre start. Uh, I think that's the way I would lean this far out without having too much more information, Gano. And... 14, 1,400 metres for Pericles fresh is the ideal setup, isn't it, mm. right? You yeah. know, you go back through preparations, one in Sydney last prep, first up 1,400 metres, albeit this is going to be a tougher task. But I think similar to a horse like V8, it, it, they have not get, got near the bottom of Pericles yet. And yeah. if there's more improvement off the past few preps, uh, he's a serious uh, Group 1 contender, I think. So I'd, with V8, and I'd probably go with you, Dino, as well, Pericles, a place I think is a great bet. You're all over it, Dino. I agree. I think if you're going to find some value, that'll be it uh, for sure. Mr. Brightside, the best version of Mr. Brightside. It first up 1,400 metres, wins this race. There's no doubt about it. Mm. I haven't seen the trials. I'll take your word for it, though. Um, you know what you're talking about. So minor queries there. Mr. Brightside probably wins, but Pericles seems like uh, the soft option and probably the smart option. So happy to take that. As long as you're making money, that's all that matters. Uh, we'll go to the Group 2, uh, Rubiton Stakes, over 1,100 metres. Uh, no markets out just yet. We might scour through a few markets quickly, see if we can find something. But Asphora here for Mitchie Aiken, Zapateo, no jockey booked, Queen of the Ball, Mark Zara, Hypothetical, Mickey D, Vivian, uh, Damien Lane, Mornington Glory, Bo Mertens, Indian Pacific, no jockey there, uh, Snapped, Oh, Curry. These are all off racing.com, uh, courtesy of Trav Noonan's article that we are reading these from. So full credit, Trav, and thank you for your work. Uh, allows us to have some sort of an idea of what we're doing, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite rare because we usually have none. Uh, Dino, how do you see the Group 2 Rubiton stakes? Yep, looks like there's going to be an absolute abundance of speed. That's the four, as Avatar, Queen of the Ball, Hypothetical, Vervain, um, Snap, India Pacific. They've all got speed, so... Could we look for something close over the top? I'm not too sure. 1100 meter starts pretty kind there. Uh, I think it's a two horse race. That's a four and Zapateo. It could be a good opportunity here. Zapateo didn't come up in the spring. She trolled the week of racing uh, in the spring and just didn't handle that at all. I'd suggest they don't do that this preparation. I don't think they have reading her trials. I think as Sephora's 1100 meter specialist, if she turns up in the form she did in the spring, she wins the race. Zapateo in for second, Louis, but. I'd suggest the market's probably got this race pretty perfect and settled um, leading in. Yeah, uh, I would think so too. I'm going to go Asfura. Uh, it's well known. I've got a sweet spot for this horse. Uh, mm. I, I'm desperate for her to get a Group 1 on the CV, Group 1 win, that is. I mean, bumping into uh, Imperatries, it, it gave shades of anyone who bumped into Winks uh, during their prime. You know, you just, you, right, you are never going to win. Hey, Liz, yeah. there he is. Bumping in the yeah. <laughs> was it black caviar hay list? Uh, yeah, unbelievable. Before my like, time, mate, I wasn't born yet. Yeah, um, but anyway, <laughs> um, but you know what you know what I mean. Like you just you kind of went out there, and and few of the rides that Mitch Aitken gave it, especially at the Valley. I think it was in a Moya. Like could not have ridden the Group One more perfectly, and mm. still looked over his right shoulder and just saw this orange thing flashing by. Like you yeah. just you'd almost just throw your hands up in the air and go, oh, "God, I give up." Um, I, the trial was good. Uh, over the 900 metres, you know she's got a great, unreal, fresh record. Four starts, three wins, and a third placing. Um, and this is uh, hopefully a another good kickoff point, a good stepping stone to a, to a fruitful campaign. Yeah, love that. I'm um, with you, uh, as Sephora, for sure. I think they'll put out $3 at one stage. I can't be too sure, but uh, that looked like the price when I was having a look yesterday. Uh, the markets will be up uh, again soon, uh, being at just sort of lunchtime on Monday. I think probably by the time the show's out, the markets will be up and... I think if you can get anything sort of between, I reckon four dollars. If you can get three or four dollars, I think that'll that'll be a bet. Um, mm. I think it's that one point two five off. Uh, Imperatrice, as you stated, Louis was very very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's, a, that's another thing, right? You just go. Oh, this is it's like having it's like having a big each way bet and a horse running fourth is fair. Yeah, like, held yeah. up the straight or yeah. something. Anyway, that happens yeah. every week. Uh, maybe it's not like yeah. that. Um, yes. Fellas, the Blue Diamond Prelude Group uh, Group 3, the Geldings Division, uh, High Octane, very, very hard to beat off what we saw on debut. Anything that can beat that bodyguard, stay focused. Uh, Dino, any opinions on anything else in the Blue Diamond Prelude? Yeah, I'd suggest the boys have a length or two on the girls looking on paper. Bold for ceiling, probably the outlier for the girls. Uh, High Octane, can't wait to see him. I think maybe a small field's going to be his kryptonite. I think he's a horse with pressure. He'll be his best. 
Stay focused. I love his debut. He's phenomenal. He's had a tick over trial since, which was sharp. Bodyguard's first trial was sharp. Second trial, he trolled as good, but Fearless come over the top. We saw Fearless run second to Proust on the weekend, so we get a little bit of a guy there. But he did that in his first preparation and went out to win by three, four lengths down the straight. So maybe it's just a race day horse. I think those three between them will fight it out. Um, if I had a lean, I'd probably lean the way of stay focused just in the small field, Gano and Louie. Um, but i really keen to see what high octane does. Um, like you mentioned, we're on a big ticket for the Blue Diamond. I think he's a really, really smart colt. Yep, live chance. Louie, any opinions in the uh, in that race? Or are you just uh, you're saving your yours up for the Phillies? Yeah, nothing real different. I um, I thought that run of homes accord in second was good. Mm. Uh, but the only problem is, I guess, that if there's improvement to come with it, which there probably is, there's probably more improvement perhaps to come with high octane. And you've got to look at the SPs. I think it started $21 homes a court, ran admirably. Um, but yeah, I think it, 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 you know, it has some sort of a future, I guess, as well. But yeah, not, nothing really to add. Love it, righto. And the Phillies, Bold Bastille. Well, I think there was a Galloper that came out and won at the Valley on debut. On a, yep. if, if my down. memory serves me correctly, on a day where war, you know, it, it wasn't too bad, too bad to be along the fence there, or from memory. So I think the figures stacked up though pretty well from that race. Uh, what's your opinion on this one, Louis? Yeah, I liked it. I um, had a, I have a ticket on in in, in the Blue Diamond. Um, at a, not a much better price than nine dollars, I must admit, but but a better one. And um, don't tell them that. The reason, well, fifty-one yeah, dollars. <laughs> figures, but it's not. I can't lie to the punters in week one. Fair dinkum. Give me the week no. two or three at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think it's I think it's a pretty smart horse. The figures on debut were really strong. Uh, the camp had always publicly said that this was the aim, so there was no chance of a bumping into a storm boy or b taking a price about it in a slipper and perhaps it, not, it never gets there. The price there was about the Blue Diamond and that's one you had to take and I did. Hopefully you can overcome that setback. You never really love to hear that, uh, especially with two-year-olds when, you know, in a matter of seconds everything can go wrong with a campaign. They're very finicky. Uh, but all things being equal, the expected field, as courtesy of Trav there, I think it is better than them. Love it. Yeah, ten to agree with you there. Uh, interesting to see what price they put up. I'd be surprised if you get anything uh, that has a two in front of it. But well, time will tell. Barriers will play a big part in that as well. Let's go to Sydney. We'll go to Randwick. The English Millennium uh, fully lit is odds courtesy of Tab. Make sure you are gambling responsibly, of course. Fully lit, your $3.50 favourite. Uh, Odinson, $4.50. Rude Royale, $6.00. Zesterman, $6.00. Trunk, $8.00. And uh, Hayasugi, $11 and $15, uh, the rest. I, I was very keen, fully lit uh, after it won. Mm. Uh, I think it was might have been around $10 or $11. It's now into three fifty. Obviously, Switzerland's come out of this market, which is very helpful for those of us that were on fully, fully lit because I think that horse would have won the race. Actually, I have no doubt the horse would have won the race, <laughs> but they've got better, pl bigger, better plans, and they want to send that horse to a golden slipper, and fair enough. And I think fully lit will win the English Millennium. You're getting 350 now. In regards to how how will that look on um, at round week on Saturday, I don't necessarily think that this price will be any different to what you get on Wednesday afternoon, so I wouldn't be chiming into it. I think it'll win the race, and then I think it'll go down to the Blue Diamond and be relatively competitive. Dino, what are your thoughts on the English Millennium? Yeah, quickly back on the prelude for the Phillies. Uh, oh. I firmly with you, sorry, Louis, Bold Basilian. I think the market will open Hay Sugi short off a moderate or average winning in the blue diamond preview so keen to be with you there back on the millennium this is very very tricky i don't know if they're gonna have to move this race or what they're gonna do but horses are keep pulling out of it so i think we gotta wait till saturday to figure out this field i think you make a great case gunner you've absolutely nailed it with fully lit with the big price do you want to chime in now three dollars fifty uh, 50 i doubt it otison's a danger but we referenced his trial off air today on ESCN, Gano, and it did not fill us with any confidence at all. So if for me, Louis, it's just a wait and see which horses actually line up in this race before we can have an opinion. Yeah, uh, pretty much agreed. And for that reason, for the for the fact that, uh, you know, a number of these horses might drop out once acceptance has come through, I wanted to have something small on Nymphadora, $51.13.50 a place. Uh, obviously needs things to fall in its favour to be able to make the field. But uh, it comes off that race behind Odinson, and it was savaging the line. An extra, I, I mean, it's hard to say, but an extra 150 metres, I'd love to see where it would have been, whether in front or still behind. But um, I'd be I'd be tipping it could almost be in front. Yeah, you're not asking for if, much. 
150 well, metres. Yeah, 150 metres, yeah, true. <laughs> Maybe another 50 metres. If you get rid of every know. other horse in the race. <laughs> yeah, it might have won. <laughs> Apart from the two that finished in front of it, it came first, really, didn't it? Um, <laughs> but if it, if it makes the field, I don't understand how Odinson's yeah. 50 and it's $51. Like, oh, that's, that's insanity to me, seeing horses drop out. Uh, if it lobs up, it has to be a genuine chance. I want to pose a question to you guys, and I'll, I'll go to you, Gannon, first. You've um, been around the sun a few more times than Dino and I. Oh, Gay Waterhouse oh, and Andrew, oh, wow. and that's, with, that's, that's, that's putting it very kindly. I mean, you're only 25, so not many yeah. more. Um, but Don't Gay be. Waterhouse and Adrian Bot, they've always been uh, known to have a very good association with two-year-old horses. Yeah. Is this year perhaps the best they have ever gone with two-year-olds. Every, almost every favourite for feature races for two-year-olds and at least three of the top ten, four of the top ten, are out of that stable. I can't believe how they just keep lobbing one up there, then one up there, then one up there. It is incredible how good they're going this year. Clearly, clearly the best year they've ever had, and I'd say the best year that any trainer in this country has ever had with two-year-olds. I don't remember anything like it. Yes, I have had a few goes around the sun, Lou, uh, and I can't remember anything like it. Um, at all, period. In racing, mm. I, think, mm. I haven't nuts. seen anything like it. It's it's quite incredible. Um, you know, your dolphins had their had their you know their go at it. They've had yeah. a good crack at it, uh, and they haven't. I don't think they've got anywhere near this. So, Dino, do you share that sentiment? Yeah, I think I have the stats here. This two year old season, fourteen from thirty eight at thirty six and a half percent strike rate for profit on turnover of twenty percent. So it's throw out the form guide stuff. I think the only year that maybe comes close was the year. They had, Godolphin had Microphone, Kimochi. I think they had four runners in the yeah. slipper. There was two others in it. I'm not sure the other two, but... Oh. Yeah, and, and I even think that year, I think a couple of them mm. were $31. Like, they weren't yeah. in the market. I think like, we got the long row played on the weekend, too. I think a no, which is trained by Waterhouse and Bot. It's favourite yeah. for that race. So. <laughs> it's just... It's That's getting to the point, Lou, where he said this morning, I actually don't know what show <laughs> they're going to do because if they run them all, there's going to be too much pressure in the race. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's, that's right. seriously right. They'll all explode up front and something else will win. But that, yeah. that shouldn't have had any chance at all. Yeah. Like, oh, be barren be, down the outside. It'd be just yeah. too funny. Yeah, just something down the outside, you'd be right. But um, something that needs extra 150 metres down the outside and uh, it'll get the job done. <laughs> hey, um, Eskimo Didn't Prince. Like that. That's good. Didn't that'll like that. be good. We'll be bringing that up for a while. As my <laughs> Prince, the group three, uh, group three over 1,200 metres. And, well, there is a there is a market out here, courtesy of Tab. Tis Invincible, $3.80. It looks to have come back very, very well. We'll get Dino's thoughts on that in a minute. End cap, four fifty. Tom Kitten might need a little bit further. Four eighty. Moravia, $6.00. Griff, six fifty. At Cabulous, $8.00. At the Macarena, Dino's favourite dance and horse, $8.00. And Celestial Legend, have a query on that runner, $11.00. Dino, fair dinkum. What are we doing here? Tis Invincible, has it come back better? Yes. She's come back yeah. She's come back phenomenal. Her trials in the spring were super. She was headline filly, just fouled into flight stakes when the gay waterhouse, typical, um, took it out again. Um, but, yeah, Tis Invincible. She's been superb in the two trials. Um, love her fresh. Um, I think she's a group one winner in the making. I'd be happy enough to chime into that price around that three fifty three dollars I think she's already moved. At tab, end cap, I don't know how he's there. Tom Kitten, yes, he's a terrific horse. Is he going to go fresh? Probably not. Mavari has trialled out well, respecting, and I think the one the market's completely missed is Griff. His trials have been exceptional. I think he was somewhat of a horse that was under wraps in the spring. He obviously took out uh, the guineas, if my mind serves me right. Yep, I think we're getting, guineas. Yeah, I don't know why we're getting 650. If you have a chance, punters, I'd suggest he's the one that's taken the most progression from three-year-old spring to a three-year-old autumn. So I'm more than happy, Gano, to have a little two-bet attack here on Tiz Invincible and Griff. I think that'll be my main play for the weekend. Yeah, love it. I think moving forward, Griff probably could be the best ha best horse out of, mm. out of them all. But Tis Invincible for me in this race, just at the 1,200 metres first up. Louis, what are your thoughts? I'm going to have to throw at the stumps at Tom Kitten. It's not really a throw at the stumps. It's 480. So, you know, <laughs> there's a fair chance if I miss, I'm going to have a lot of egg on my face. But I'm going off the theory that uh, Group 1 winner over 2,000 metres at the end of last preparation and absolutely belted them. So, obviously... Mm. This horse is a, a serious stayer that's not going to muck around in these short distances too long. But how often do you see top-line stayers come back and run an absolute bottle of first up and then maybe second or third up just float around for a bit and then once they get back up to that 2,000, 2,400 metres, get right back into their work? I really don't think you can overlook Tom Kitten on this Eskimo Prince, albeit, as we just mentioned, it's a, it's a hot addition of the race. 
Uh, good, isn't I it? I thought the Strong trial race. at Hawkesbury mm. was good. And I just think maybe you'll – I reckon you'll get a better price. It has to drift, being that the, the figure it's, or its best figure will come over a 2,000-metre trip or further against some horses who can be better at a shorter distance here. But um, I, I think it can run a serious race fresh, Tom Kitten, if – if anything is to go by in, in, in past where good stayers have run very well first up. Love that. Love that. That's that's good stuff, Lou. That's good stuff for me. Do you, yeah, think, okay. like, do you think you're going to get maybe more closer to sort of 6 or $7, though, come Saturday, just given the fact of it's given his profile? Well, if you think about it, if you know, you guys just put uh, a good push in for Griff and, um, the, you know, the smarts will, will watch those trials. I don't know how often they bet off trials, to be fair. Mm. I'd love to see stats on that. I think sometimes mm. they can just disregard trials. But there's a chance Griff starts a bit shorter. Uh, NCAP, probably the one to drift maybe as well. Yeah. Yeah. Surely. Has to. Could, could firm. So, look, 480 currently. I don't, yeah, look, I don't think you'll be getting like an $8 price. You mm. might. And if you do, don't back it because clearly something's wrong. <laughs> mm. um, but if you were to, if you could get around $6 maybe, I, yeah. I think uh, it would be an okay bet. Love it. Dino, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, Louis just um, nudged my memory. A good often have won three out of the last five Eskimo Princes. Um, Afghan last year, Playley before that, and Kevin Tari all have won that mm. race. First up off one trial, and guess how many trials Tom Kitten's had? Mm. Mm. One I'm going to go with one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. You get a car. Guess that. <laughs> Love it. All right, I, I, got some, uh, I got some horses to follow and horses to sell for you, lads. This wasn't something that was on the run sheet. This is something I'm going to throw at you. Before we wrap this show up with uh, your best uh, your best all-in plays and your midweek best bets, if you've got any horses to follow from the weekend, uh, yell them out. i got a couple for you. Chris Steely, I thought she was really good. I think she's going to come out and find a very real winnable race. So she went around to Rose Hill. But obviously, clearly, Lady of Camelot's a horse we want to follow. And how Kobe's son is progressive. Manal, very impressive. Liked it. Mm. Steffi, Magnetica. Fair dinkum. Like, should have won in that last race. Yeah. Good thing beat. And Robusto, another horse that was probably a good thing beat as well. A couple of horses I'm happy to be against moving forward. Infatuation had every possible perfect race shape and won. Full credit. Will be very very short next time. Malkovic can't possibly ever consider backing it again. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I did get five dollars fifty though. Send him to race. Yeah, send him to race. Yeah. Good one. And uh, yeah. and Estadio Mastella. Well, this horse mm. had its Christmas perfect race shape. Full <laughs> credit to Joey Pride. Seven day back up on like it was absolutely perfect. No knock. But I would be surprised if it gets that lucky ever again. Mm. Uh, Dino, any horses to follow? Yep, I've got four fearless. I thought it was good in um, the Canterbury. Probably doesn't get checked, goes close to Benny Proust. I think lost any ounce of tempo in that first race at Caulfield. It wins. Punch Lane, smash the clock, and Jimmy's a star. Well, Jimmy's star, I have backed in the Doncaster boys. I think he's a group one horse in the making. So they're the four. Any to pot, I can't really think, Louis. You can just take it away. I um. I just want to get your thoughts on where you guys reckon Lady Laguna can get to. Just like, I mean, how, okay, a mare in form, mm. yes. So that probably adds a bit mm. of juice to what we're seeing. And maybe if you get it against hard, better horses, and that's with respect to the Southern Cross Stakes on the weekend, they uh, weren't the strongest of runners. But, gee, it's going really well. And as I keep saying, those horses that are up and fit, did it snag yep. a little, a group two, 1,200 metres, something just with that fitness and, and the form that it's in, albeit it probably won't be the horse to follow out of a group two win if it, if just, it does win one. But I'll yeah, just what do you say mean? it had the perfect, absolute, like, perfect race shape. J-Mac just yeah. jumped and put in the mm. right spot, and they, I think they went pretty slow. I haven't seen any data, but they, they looked like they went pretty slow. Hence my pot on Malkovich. Yeah, because, because it's like a, you actually don't know what that is, that run. Like that's an asterisk mm, because everything mm, was perfect. Mm, it wasn't actually tested. Mm. It was a, it was essentially it was essentially one and a half times a barrier trial, Dino. Yeah, I think she's right up to winning. I think we we talk about this. I think she can win maybe like a Canterbury uh yeah, Canterbury stakes, like a thirteen hundred meter race where a lot of horses are first up and she'll hit it third or fourth up. I think twelve hundred mm. or thirteen hundred to her go. Um they did crawl on the weekend, seven lengths lower than the average or five lengths lower than the average for six, but she screamed home seven lengths faster. So she has had the right setup, but in saying that, she's tactically versatile. We saw a Gold Coast win. She yeah. come from off the speed. She can go on the speed. So she's a really, really hard horse to pot. 
do they put her away and maybe bring her back for a Queensland carnival? Well, that might be her shout, Louis, because the issue yeah. if you go on now, she, I think she's third or fourth up. I think mm, you get one mm, crack mm. and then you've got yeah. no upside. So yeah, um, yeah. even, even like Adelaide. Her. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, she could be well. good off like a, off the main road, group two, group yeah. three. Well, he's got a bit yeah, of his heart in Adelaide, doesn't he? He wants to see a class mm. horse get down there. This uh, this even carnival. a quaker horse maybe he might see it. Hey. Well. Oh, that's nah, true. I'm a bit of a nightmare trying to travel a mirror over to uh, to WA. You can pen that idea. Uh, mm. Righto, lads. Uh, give us your best all-in plays of uh, of the week. I'll kick us off. Um, mine's in the blue diamond pre- prelude for the Phillies. Uh, Bold Bastillion, um, I just think the rest of them are no good. I think Heisugi will come up short, which will give us a prize for Bold Bastillion, and she'll be winning, Lou. Yeah, I'm going to go a bit different. I'm going to go with a horse called Bulba Steel. Um, Steel. I think it might be in that same race. Yeah, Dan, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you, mate. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, best all in play, hardest to beat. And as, as I said, in that, in that um, English Millennium race, if it man- manages to gain a start, you'd want to take $51 about uh, Nipodora. Does it still start double figures? Perhaps. But I don't think it'll start 51 if it gets in. So have something small each way on it. Love it, Louis. Uh, Tis Invincible in the Eskimo Prince. I think she's back, and I think the 1,200 metres first up is right up her alley at Randwick. Uh, I think the most likely the rail will be in the true position at Randwick. I think that'll just set up perfectly for her. Dino, faux pas, eh? <laughs> hey? Faux pas. Hey, um, midweek, best bets. What do you got for me? Um, hopefully, we don't line up from week one. Go, that'd be a poor start, but... Uh... John O'Shea go up uh, Warwick Farm race one at number four linebacker uh, suits the theme Super Bowl next week. Mm. Uh, it's tried oh, up well. Omen. Yeah, Omen bet like that Creed one yesterday at Sapphire Coast. But yeah, race one number four linebacker. No odds out yet, but I think it'll open close to favour and should prove too hard to beat there at Warwick Farm. You know? Your man Tags will be on that. Me will be. Loves an open bet. Loves an open bet. And uh, Louis, uh, your 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 tags as number one fan. Uh, have you got a midweek best bet uh, for us? Well, he he um he made show some decorum in his best yesterday at sale, and it duly saluted. So no, tags is all right, tags is all right with me. Um, <laughs> Must I be going right prize money. saluted no. him on its back. God, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. tags. <laughs> I was a bit nervous, but no, did well. Um, I'm going to go Sandown race four number nine. Thinking rain. Speaking of um. Uh, lady, uh, no, with the horse we were just talking about in the OGI colours, Lady Laguna. This is yep. an Annabelle Nisham runner, gets Craig Williams aboard. Was pretty unlucky first up at Cranbourne, went to Packenham last start in a pretty low benchmark 58, but saluted and saluted well. Gets down on the weights here, 55 and a half from barrier four with Craig Williams. So, and not a, not a, you know, overly strong race. So, race four, number nine, thinking rain. Love that. No odds out yet. Uh, Warwick Farm race two. There's a horse that tried really, really well called uh, Red Breast for Waterhouse and Bot. Taking on horse that's uh, trained by Mitch Beer called Suspect. Really keen on that race. So uh, okay. good luck. The Wolf Den lads are in uh, in Suspect. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Suspect goes very, very close. But uh, I think Red Breast will be very hard to beat. It tried quite well behind a horse that went up to uh, Wyong and blew them away. Dino, do you remember that? Uh, the name of that horse. No, I do know the horse. Merchant Red Lady, Breast, so. Merchant Lady for, yes. for Team Snowden ran really well. Anyway, so I think look, I think Red Breast is going well. Barry Eleven goes forward, hard to beat, but no odds out yet. So a bit hard to give a real opinion on what I think it'll win. Hey lads, good job. Mm. Thanks, good mate. Job. Have we missed I'll anything? I work on my Great. bowl, Bastillion or Basta or whatever you want to call it. I'll work <laughs> on that for next week, boys. Hey, as long as it wins, Dino, I couldn't care what you call it. Yeah, no one cares. As long as as long as we're backing winners, gambling responsibly, having a whole heap of fun at the same time. If you want to get some content, uh, more content out of us, if you want to hear some things, you've got some questions, you want to ask, you want something new, hey, fire it in the comments. Uh, we'll get back to you. And if it's your idea is any good, maybe we'll run with it because Dino tends to throw a few ideas every week and Louis just straight bats them. He goes, nah, mate. So we're looking yeah. for some new gear. And, uh, you, should, you should want to hear more content from us. Uh, Gannon's got a very fancy new microphone that he's using, and he sounds yeah. nice and smooth on, yeah, the, on the airwaves. He's in the deep. He's in the deep. He thinks we're going to go yeah. whole year now. He's I, might, <laughs> I might just sit here and, listen, and record myself for the next hour or so oh, just yeah. to listen to how good this sounds. But right, lads, yeah. I think these people had a gut full of us. Uh, until next week, can't wait. Uh, we'll be back bigger, better, and stronger. Bye for now. Ciao, Thanks, boys.